the President Biden, you are the leader of the nation, of your great nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. That was Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky who addressed Congress early this morning. And of course his speech was meant to essentially ask the United States government to provide more assistance, more aid as they continue their fierce resistance against the Russian troops. Now. Of course, there's no question this is something that he's been asking for almost from the very beginning. Ukraine would like the United States to implement a no-fly zone, something that Biden luckily has resisted. I'll tell you what Biden has agreed to in just a moment, but I think it's important to hear the heart of of what this speech was really about, what Zelensky was really calling for. Pearl Harbor. Terrible morning of December 7, 1941, when your sky was black from the planes attacking you. Just remember it. Remember September the 11th, a terrible day in 20, 2001, when evil tried to turn your cities, independent territories, in battlefields, when innocent people were attacked, attacked from air, yes, just like no one else expected it. You could not stop it. Our country experienced the same every day. Russian troops have already fired nearly 1,000 missiles at Ukraine, countless bombs. They use drones to kill us with precision. This is a terror that Europe has not seen, has not seen for 80 years. And we are asking for a reply, for an answer to this terror from the whole world. Is this a lot to ask for, to create a no-fly zone zone over Ukraine to save people? Is this too much to ask? Humanitarian no-fly zone, something that Ukraine, that Russia would not be able to terrorize our free cities. So in the speech, Zelensky, you know, I think used a pretty smart tactic. He received a standing ovation by the time the speech was over. He made sure to point to parts of United States history where innocent people were victimized. He mentioned 9-11, he mentioned you know, what happened in Pearl Harbor. And so his argument here is just remember what that felt like. And is it too much to ask for the US to implement a no-fly zone? And listen, the answer is yes, it is. And we've talked about why it's a bad idea to implement a no-fly zone and honestly how counterproductive it is to implement a no-fly zone in the search for peace or in the quest for peace because it would not lead to more peace. It's very likely that it would escalate the situation significantly. And what it would mean is that the United States would engage in a direct conflict with Russia. Doesn't mean that we're gonna send, you know, more military weaponry to Ukraine and they're gonna, no, it means our troops would go to Ukraine and they would shoot down Russian planes. And when you're talking about a nuclear power, escalating the situation is terrifying. There's you know, mutually assured destruction that, that can take place when you're dealing with, first of all, someone like Vladimir Putin who has shown himself to be a pretty much a lunatic in regard to how he's acting, how he's, I mean, he doesn't seem to have, um, many limitations in what he's willing to do. The way he's been willing to bomb hospitals. Just today, Russian troops decided to bomb a theater in Mariupol that was being used as a bomb shelter for Ukrainian civilians. That report is still ongoing and we don't know the details in regard to how many civilians might have died as a result of that attack. So the idea of further inflaming the situation by implementing a no-fly zone would actually be counterproductive. But I understand why Zelensky is calling for one. Now, shockingly, even Republican senators have good responses in rejecting the idea of a no-fly zone. So I want to give, believe it or not, Senator Roy Blunt a little bit of credit for how he handled a question from CNN's Manu Raju on this issue. Let's watch. 
And any time you put American pilots and American planes in the sky with Russian pilots and planes in the sky, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're really taking a chance that we may engage at a level that I don't think we're prepared to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he's right about that. So uh, Roy Blunt, even a broken clock, <laughs> he's right in uh, turning this down. Now for the White House, what we've heard from Joe Biden is that he is in fact willing to continue assisting Ukraine with more humanitarian aid, with more military aid. He has also agreed to provide Ukraine with drones. There's still an ongoing debate in Congress in regard to fighter jets and whether or not the United States is gonna you know, attempt to find ways to get fighter jets to Ukraine. But senators like Mark Warner are against it. He argues that that would also escalate the situation. And considering this bit of good news that came out today, I think that might be accurate, okay? So listen, things are of course subject to change just when you think that Maybe things are going in the right direction. Maybe Putin is backing off a little bit. All of a sudden, you'll read another story about a theater being bombed or a hospital being bombed. You know, so I just want to proceed with caution as I give you this update. But it's a story that really wasn't covered much by the corporate media. It was published by Reuters, and it's a really important angle to the story in regard to their peace talks. So the peace talks are still ongoing. I know it doesn't seem like it because we're seeing this war being carried out. However, the peace talks have happened on three consecutive days. That's the first time this has happened. And there have been some positive results according to both sides. This isn't just Ukraine saying there have been positive results. It's not just Russia saying it. It seems like they're getting closer to negotiation. And it also seems as though Biden, I'm sorry, Putin is being kind of backed up into a corner because of how he grossly miscalculated calculated this invasion and the outcome of the invasion. So I want to read a few excerpts from this Reuters piece. They write that the meetings, they report, the meetings continue and I am informed the positions during the negotiations already sound more realistic, Zelensky said in a video address overnight. Later on Wednesday, meaning today, he said Ukrainians must fight to defend our state, our life, our Ukrainian life. But he also, this is important, emphasized negotiations for a just but fair peace for Ukraine, real security guarantees that will work. So I want to pause for a second and give you guys a little bit, a little context about these security commitments. Now, back in the 1990s, I believe it was the Budapest Agreement. You have the United States, Russia, Ukraine, and I believe the UK coming together to make an agreement about Ukraine's nuclear arsenal. Ukraine agreed to give up its nuclear arsenal in return for security commitments. The United States signed on to that. Russia signed on to that for what it's worth. So there was the agreement, they gave up their nuclear arsenal. The people of Ukraine, understandably, believe that that was a huge mistake. They believe that had they maintained those chemical weapons, those, I'm sorry, nuclear weapons, they wouldn't be invaded by Russia. So first of all, that's a terrible lesson to learn from all of this. I hate the idea that, you know, Countries that might be willing to give up their nuclear arsenal now look at situations like what's happening in Ukraine and reconsider. If we really care about nuclear disarmament, this is not a good case study. So this is part of the reason why the United States is invested in helping Ukraine protect itself. It agreed to those security commitments. So I wanted to give you that context, that little bit of history. So you know what's really going on and you understand the rhetoric coming from Ukrainian officials when they really emphasize the importance of a security commitment that actually means something. But let me give you more. So Zelensky said on Tuesday that Ukraine could accept international security guarantees that stop short of its longstanding aim to join NATO. He said neutral status, and by the way, Russian officials said that neutral status is now being seriously discussed. By the way, it was seriously discussed before they invaded. Along, of course, with security guarantees, Russia's Lavrov said on Wednesday, there are absolutely specific formulations, which in my view are close to agreement. So look, we've told you before, I'll say it again, Right before, a few days before Putin decided to invade Ukraine, Zelensky pretty much gave up his efforts to join NATO. 
And uh, NATO representatives also said they were giving up, you know, it was ultimately up to Zelensky, but they can understand if they want to just drop it because it seems to be provoking Russia, right? It seems to be provoking Putin. Putin invaded anyway. Putin was going to invade no matter what. This is something that he wanted to do, he did it. Didn't matter what Zelensky had to say about NATO to begin with. You can be critical of NATO, as we've been on this show, but you got to state the reality of what happened prior to the invasion. Now, the way that Russian officials are messaging this though, I'm totally fine with. Because the way that it comes across to me is that Putin, who's battered by this war and the resistance by the Ukrainians, is trying to find an out. So let's just give it to him. If, if he wants to present this as a win for the Russian people by saying, would you look at that? Zelensky agreed to avoid joining NATO, we won, fine. If that means he's gonna withdraw, fine. Why would he wanna do that? Well, I mean, think about it. He's already uh, pled for China to provide aid uh, because of the fact that he miscalculated this war. There are also other economic issues. We've talked about the sanctions in great detail. Before I get to how those sanctions have impacted Russia and the Kremlin, let me give you more details about the negotiations. So Vladimir Medinsky, uh, Russia's chief negotiator, told State TV, quote, Ukraine is offering an Austrian or Swedish version of a neutral demilitarized state, but at the same time a state with its own army and navy. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said the idea could really be seen as a compromise. Look, I, I don't know why this story is being ignored by corporate media, this is important. Okay, instead of focusing all of our energy on how are we gonna, fighter jets, let's get fighter, are you gonna get fighter jets? I mean, you watch a Jen Psaki press conference and every reporter asks the same question about fighter jets. It's fine to ask about that, but hey, maybe, maybe a question about how these peace negotiations are doing. Maybe a question or two about that. Also, Ukraine's chief negotiator said guarantees were being discussed to provide a rigid agreement with a number of guarantor states undertaking clear legal obligations to actively prevent attacks on Ukraine. And now going back to the sanctions, another reason why I think Putin is looking for an out here. The sanctions are really hurting Russia. I mean, Russia has been cut off from the financial, the global financial system, essentially. And so Russia was due to pay $117 million in interest on dollar denominated sovereign bonds, but could be forced to pay in rubles instead because of these sanctions, amounting to its first default on foreign debt since the Bolshevik Revolution. So Putin's hurt, and I think it would be a terrible idea to escalate the war when it seems like Putin might be looking for an out. And it seems as though these negotiations are finally starting to come together. We'll see what happens, of course, things are likely to change. But I do wanna make sure that we keep an eye on the negotiations. They're just as important as the debates regarding how much aid we're gonna provide Ukraine. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.